Uh, hi everyone, my name is Ksenia Kraleva. I'm an associate at Latham & Watkins Moscow. I'm here with my colleague Vadim Popov, who is a lawyer at Latham & Watkins Moscow. And we are going to give you a brief introduction into the Russian data privacy regime. And the purpose of the, this cycle of webinars, which contains uh, two parts, uh, is to not only to give you the overview over the Russian data privacy regime, but also to compare it to the GDPR regime uh, to make sure that it's easier for um, you to comply with the two regimes in coherence. So uh, during this first presentation, we will focus on the general uh, description of the Russian data protection rules and uh, on some of the key notions and concepts such as the definition of personal data, the definition of data operator, the key rights uh, of the individuals. And in the second webinar, which is going to uh, happen in a week's time, we will deep dive into certain Russian law, specific Russian law aspects such as the Russian data localization rules uh, or the specific of the Russian regime in general. So um, I'll give the floor to Vadim for a short introduction as regards the Russian personal data law. Thank you very much, Ksenia. Um, on this slide, you can see um, we outlined the key difference between the regulatory framework and Russia and the European Union. Um, as you may see, Russian personal data law is the main regulatory act in Russia that uh, applies on the entire territory of Russia. Uh, as, you, as you will uh, notice during our presentation, GDPR and Russian PD law are very similar to each other as the Russian personal data law was developed on the basis of the early versions of the EU data protection regulations, um, namely, the directive, the EU directive on data protection that was predecessor of the GDPR. Um, in Russia, there is no overall regional regulations covering data privacy rules. Uh, however, certain local treaties may regulate data processing rules at the same time. Um, there are several issues that are covered in subordinate legislation adopted by Russian government and Russian data protection authority that amongst other includes cross-border personal data transfer and certain technical requirements that should be adopted by data controllers or data operators, how they are called in the uh, Russian personal data law. Uh, we will cover this concept a little bit later. Um, Russian supervision authority, Russian data protection authority is Roskomnadzor. Uh, its main function is to conduct general supervision over data processing by data controllers, or uh, as mentioned before, data operators uh, in Russia. Uh, Roskomnadzor sometimes uh, offers interpretive guidance of Russian data privacy rules that might be helpful for data controllers. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Vadim. So on the next slide, you can see the key definitions uh, and actors under the GDPR and the uh, Russian data privacy uh, law. Uh, and here we wanted to cover certain key uh, concepts which include personal data and its um, between the GDPR and the Russian data protection law is how the uh, concept of personal data is applied. Namely, in Russia, certain types of data which are not considered to be a personal data under the EU regime could be considered personal data. This primarily relates to unconventional personal data uh, or unconventional data uh, such as cookies, um, geolocation, IP address, GPS and uh, certain other things. Uh, the Russian practice uh, believes that this information can identify the individual and therefore it can be considered personal data. Um, sim uh, both the GDPR and the Russian data protection law provide for the notion of special categories of personal data, and these are largely the same, and uh, these cover most sensitive personal data. Um, the difference between the EU and the Russian approach is that biometrics are uh, specifically included in the special category of personal data, which is also separately regulated under Russian regime, but not in the way um, in which it's regulated under the GDPR. So this is the first important notion, personal data. Um, um, second notion is the data controller. 
So the data controller is a person. Um, it's both under the EU rules and the Russian rules. It's a person which determines the purposes and means of processing of personal data. And basically, it's someone who controls the um, processing of data. With respect to Russia, um, the, there is no actual definition of which can be translated as state controller. And the, the term that the Russian law uses is data operator, but essentially it's the same as data controller. Under the GDPR regime, you also have a specific regime for data processors, being persons who have been appointed to process personal data, so who play a technical role in the processing and do not determine the purposes, etc., with regards to their processing. Um, in, Russian, in Russia, there is no similar uh, or specific concept like that at law. However, um, there are certain articles in the Russian personal data protection law which regulates effectively the rules uh, based on which a data operator or data controller can involve or engage a third party for the processing. And uh, in particular, uh, any personal data operator uh, which wants to engage a data processor and needs to have in place a certain a set of documents, including a confidentiality agreement, a statement of work, and uh, an agreement providing for security of data. Actually, all these statements and agreements can be combined into one, and that's how it's usually done. Uh, the regime is largely the same as in the EU, however, as noted, the, there is no specific notion of data processor and accordingly no specific set of rules which regulates the data processing as such. Um, here we have outlined some of the questions to the introductory part of our presentation, so you could check yourself on the key takeaways. Please consider this yourself and we will give you the answers shortly. So the next section that we wanted to cover is a set of rights that personal data subjects have under Russian law. So the, uh, the rights provided with respect to um, Russian personal data subjects are essentially the same as uh, are provided to European citizens and other data subjects in Europe under the GDPR regime. So these include access to personal data, uh, certain restrictions on processing, objection to processing, and right to object to an automated decision. There are some differences between the Russian regime and the EU regime. In particular, uh, first of all, the data portability right is not provided for at law, and effectively the data portability right um, was only introduced into the GDPR to uh, facilitate the transfer of data from one service from, from one resource to another resource, for example, from one social media to another social media, uh, and this has not been documented in um, Russian law. So that's a quick overview of how rights of personal data subjects under the Russian regime and GDPR are in play. Uh, essentially, now we are going to go through each particular right um, by uh, in turn. First one is access to personal data, so subject to certain restrictions, um, like restrictions in the course of ML or criminal proceedings. Every um, individual has the right to access his or her personal data and obtain information about the process. These rights and the scope of these rights is the same under Russian law and um, the GDPR. Um, another one is restriction of processing. Uh, it's basically the same as access, so subject to certain restrictions, the individual can restrict processing of his or her data, potentially have to get access to it. 
Um, a third right interconnected to this is objection to processing. It's right to object to a certain uh, processing or a processing for a certain person, uh, purpose or in a certain way. And uh, the last one that I would cover is the right to object to automated decision. And it's basically the same uh, under both the GDPR and the Russian regime. And it's the right of a data subject to object to any decision, which is based solely on an automated uh, process. So if it's not automated and if it, a human being is, for example, involved, then um, there's no way to object um, to such processing based on this ground. There may be other grounds, but this ground only applies to purely automated decisions. And it, for example, may be used by a person who has been fired uh, based solely on certain automated um, artificial intelligence type um, algorithm. And uh, I briefly covered the data possibility, so the ability to transfer data from one um, source and then the last uh, right um, that I wanted to cover, and Vadim will talk about it more, is the right to be forgotten, because there are some key differences between the Russian um, approach and the EU approach, but essentially these are the same. Um, thank you, Ksenia. Uh, recently, uh, Russian court practice on the PD law has developed uh, a very broad right to be forgotten, granted to a personal data subject. Namely, there is a lot of new court cases where, where court allows personal data subject to request data controller to delete relevant personal data, including the data on employment, including the marketing data where the uh, personal data is used by data controller, uh, whether it's used on the website or on printed materials. Also, this is quite, uh, this right is quite often used by personal data subject uh, in order to ensure erasure of criminal record data and many, many other. Uh, so usually when personal data subjects are trying to protect their rights, uh, they usually have uh, multiple ways how they could do so. Namely, they could go to data controller and uh, request the erasure directly from the data controller. Or either they could go to uh, Roskomnadzor, Russian Data Protection Authority, uh, and just, and just uh, file the complaint against the data controller. Or uh, if if uh, the data subject requests to do so or wishes to do so, it could actually uh, file a claim in Russian court in order to ensure erasure. So there is a system of three levels uh, how the erasure could be granted to data subjects. Data subject could, first of all, go to data controller, then to Roskomnadzor, the Russian Data Protection Authority, and to the Russian court. Here we would like to give a brief overview of the fines that might be applicable in case of violation of data privacy rules. Um, as you may notice, in Russia, size of fines is generally determined at the discretion of data protection yes. authority. Roskomnadzor or uh, Russian court, as the case may be. Um, as you may see, the maximum fines in Russia are generally smaller than in the European Union. Uh, moreover, the maximal fines uh, that are listed on the slide are for breach of Russian localization rules, uh, which, for, which cover uh, the processing and storage of personal data of Russian citizens that should be done on uh, servers located in Russia. Don't worry, we will cover this further in our presentation. So generally, um, no huge fines in Russia are typically used. However, the enforcement approach is uh, gradually changing and is becoming more harsh. Uh, we have added detailed information on, fine, uh, on fines in appendix to this presentation. And we encourage you to review this by yourself in your free time. Now we will move forward uh, to self-assessment questions in order so you could check the concepts that we have covered recently. Please consider this yourself and we will provide you with the answers shortly.
Um, so we, uh, with this slide, we wanted to recap what we have covered during this presentation. Essentially, uh, what has been discussed is, so first of all, um, it's the origin of the Russian data protection legislation. And um, as we discussed, it's based on the EU law gen more generally. But that's why it's uh, rather easy, uh, we would say, to comply with Russian rules, uh, provided that you comply with the EU regime, subject to certain matters that we're going to cover in part two of this presentation. Uh, then we have covered the definitions of data controller, which is translated into Russian as data operator, uh, and under Russian law is a data operator. Um, then the data processor, uh, which is not defined in Russia, but is essentially the same concept as in the EU. We have also considered the key rights of the personal data subjects under the Russian personal data law and GDPR. And in particular, um, it's um, key to understand that the rights are generally the same. Uh, there are some additional rights which are provided under the GDPR, but not yet provided under Russian law, such as the right to data portability. However, when you are preparing any kind of privacy policies which you are intend to use for Russia, what needs to be done is when you have a section, your rights uh, it should not only apply to the EU, but also Russia. And generally, whenever EU is mentioned, it's uh, in most cases um, advisable to mention Russia as well. So another key takeaway, which is, however, subject to change, is that the, although the regime is quite similar under Russian law to the EU one, uh, Russia has not yet um, reached the level of fines imposed by the GDPR. So the fines are essentially smaller, although the recent trend is that there are more and more fines. And uh, last but not least, Roskomnadzor, the Russian Data Protection Authority, often likes to um, have uh, like to impose liability not only in the form of a fine, but also in the form of a blocking of the website from the territory of Russia. And will um, usually based on certain specific violations of Russian law rules. And this is something that we're going to cover in part two of the presentation. So thank you very much for your time. And we are happy to address any questions and generally at your disposal. And we'll be happy to see you on the second part of our webinar.